We think reading great Christian books is vital for spiritual growth. So we are asking significant Christian leaders which three books have changed their lives. Justin Briley presents the popular radio debate and podcast, Unbelievable. He's also the senior editor of Premier Christianity magazine. He loves apologetics and tries to create programs and write articles that bring theology into the real world. Justin is married to Lucy, who is the minister of a church in Surrey. They have four children together. When he's not working, Justin is usually either spending time with his family or helping out at the church. We will sometimes find him playing guitar and singing. Well, I've been hosting a podcast and radio show called Unbelievable for over 10 years. And every week I sit down and have a conversation with a Christian and a non-Christian very often to talk about the evidence for and against Christianity. And in doing that for over 10 years, I've been able to kind of put my case together for Christian faith in the process. So the book that I've written is called Unbelievable, with a question mark, that's the title of the show. And it's subtitled, Why After 10 Years of Talking with Atheists, I'm Still a Christian. And so very much it's a book that I hope that a skeptic would read who's interested in the case for Christianity, a book that a Christian might read who's interested in making the case for Christ, and anyone who's interested in hearing good quality dialogue and conversation. The book that's changed my life has been Surprised by Joy by C.S. Lewis, which is really the story of his conversion from atheism to Christian faith. When I was converted as a teenager, I avidly read C.S. Lewis. I'd been brought up on the Narnia stories anyway, and when I discovered his own story of journeying from atheism to Christian faith, I was captivated by it. He actually brought out both the intellectual issues, the intellectual reasons why it makes sense to believe in Christianity, but he also did it alongside the emotional journey he took. And in the book, he describes things like experiencing poetry as a young man and how that experience, which he described as something like a stab of joy, would later be fully realised in understanding the source of that in Jesus Christ in his later years. So for me, that's been a really important book. Well, I'm really into apologetics, uh, which is the defence of the Christian faith, and one of the best authors in that realm recently has been Tim Keller, who has been for a long time pastor to the skeptics in New York. But it's actually one of his books really that helped to get to the heart of the Christian story that has helped me the most, and that's The Prodigal God. And in that book, Tim Keller looks at the story of the prodigal son told by Jesus, and he explains why it's just so pivotal to the whole story of Christianity, because most of us are on some kind of journey, often away from God in one form or another, but God's always ready to welcome us back. Now, most people focus on the, the rebellious young son who goes off to make his fortune and comes back groveling to the father, but Tim Keller also picks up the story of the son who stayed at home, explaining that he was just as much a prodigal to his father as the other because of the, the legalism and hardness of heart that developed in him. And he goes on to explain how these two represent two different kinds of Christianity effectively, and that we can be just as lost to God in our legalism and our rules and so on as we can be for those who take a more expressive route and try to cast off you know, the shackles of Christianity and so on. So for me, it's, it's a wonderful example uh, of how to take Jesus' teaching, apply it to the world we live in today, and help Christians in all kinds of spheres uh, find that Jesus is there for them as well. The Atheist Who Didn't Exist, with the subtitle or The Dreadful Consequences of Bad Arguments, is a wonderful little book by Andy Bannister. He's a friend of mine, he's a brilliant Christian apologist, someone who defends the Christian faith. But what's unique about this book is that it really brings home Andy's own sense of humour. He tells lots of wacky stories in it to illustrate his point. So it's a book that will both make you laugh and will make you think. And essentially the book is about um, pinpointing some of the problems that exist within a purely atheistic, materialistic world view. And uh, he talks about the fact that there are some issues with a, a universe in which there's no purpose, uh, no ultimate logic, uh, no ultimate destination, no ultimate meaning. And he really helps you to think through those issues. So it's the kind of book you might want to give to a friend who thinks they're a thought through atheist and say, well, what are some of the consequences of the particular worldview that you hold? And it may just help them to think about that and who knows, come a step closer towards Christianity. 
I mean, the reality is I probably don't make as much time as I would like to or should make for reading. But the way I do make time for reading is by simply, I guess, prioritising it because I think it's something you should do if you enjoy it. And so for me, that will mean choosing not to uh, go on social media, which can take up so much time eventually you don't realise where it's all gone. Um, instead of just flipping on the TV if I want to relax in the evening, actually, sometimes it's about consciously saying, no, I'm going to read that book that I started six weeks ago but haven't really picked up again since then. And a lot of the time it's just about getting into a book and once I've found a book that captivates me, that grips me, then I'll actually find I make time to read it because I want to find out what happens next. I've got three great books to recommend to you that you might not have come across. The first is called Home, The Quest to Belong by Jo Swinney. Jo's a brilliant writer and she writes with a real lightness of touch. She's great at telling stories and she reflects and meditates on the whole idea of home and why it's so important to all of us. I love to find vulnerable kids' homes through fostering and adoption. That's why I run a charity called Home for Good. Well, this is a book that will help all of us appreciate why home is so important to us. Well worth a read. If, like me, you've been really wrestling with how people who call themselves Christians can be racist and indeed white supremacist, here's a book that will help us change the way the world thinks about Jesus and the church. It's called Leading a Multicultural Church by Malcolm Payton. One of the ways that we show that Jesus isn't racist and that Christianity is good news for all the nations is by welcoming all those nations into our churches. And Malcolm's been running a multicultural church in Walthamstow, London for many years, so he brings practical and prophetic insight into this important topic. Now this last book does what Chris Tomlin's been doing to some of our best loved hymns. He's been writing new choruses so a new generation can engage with those beautiful words. Well here is a classic book by John Stott called Christian Mission in the Modern World and it helps us wrestle with the whole issue of social justice and evangelism, confidence in the gospel in a pluralist society. And Chris Wright has been writing some beautiful um, additional essays to bring those classic words into the 21st century. This book will change the way that you think about mission and is well worth a read. Thanks for joining us at Books for Life. Please join us at the booksforlife.uk website where you can hear all the news about all the best new books.